Shining a light on autism and life as an autistic person. Welcome to My Friend Autism, a podcast breaking down barriers, stigma and misconceptions around autism while increasing understanding and acceptance of the autistic community. And now, here's your neurodivergent host, Orion Kelly. Welcome, my friend. It is so good to have you back checking out another podcast of mine. Hey, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about helping you raise your level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, well, look, I'd be delighted if you consider subscribing to this podcast channel, Orion Kelly Podcasts. Thank you for watching and listening to the podcast on my YouTube channel. If you're listening to it on other podcast platforms, thank you for listening. I've also got my primary YouTube channel you should definitely go and check out for all my video content, which is Orion Kelly, That Autistic Guy. So by subscribing to my YouTube channels, you are simply helping me reach more people to raise the level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. Now, on this podcast, we're going to explore the topic of echolalia. I'll explain what it is, don't worry. Why autistic people do it, we'll explain that. Plus... I'll explain why someone else that you might have heard of does it. The extraordinary attorney Wu. Hmm. My friend, autism with Orion Kelly. All right, so let's unpack echolalia. Some say echolalia, some say echolalia. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. Let's explain what it is. Let's provide some examples and let's explore why autistic people just like me use it. Okay, so first up, What is it? Echolalia is the repetition of sounds, words, or phrases heard by someone. So don't get this confused with another type, which which we'll talk about in in another podcast. This is about the repetition of sounds, words, and phrases heard by someone. Okay, so I'm repeating things I've heard. Echolalia, just in case you're wanting to know, (laughs) derived from... The Greek roots where echo means to repeat, lalia means speech. Okay, that makes sense. You hear someone's noises, speech, talk, whatever, you repeat it. Now, echo lalia is absolutely not exclusive to autistic people. Many other people use it, including those with Tourette's. They use echo lalia among many, many others. Though it is predominantly common with autistic people. Echolalia is the unsolicited repetition of utterances made by others. Here's one of my favorite definitions I found online. Echolalia is, get this, meaningless <laughs> repetition of another person's spoken words or as a symptom of a psychiatric disorder. Wowzers. Okay, so they're, they're like, I'm not saying that's the right thing. That's just rubbish, just crap you find online. Anyway. They're not meaningless for autistic people. I'll tell you why. Okay, so let's talk about some examples here. I think you're an examples person. I can just feel it by your aroma. (laughs) That doesn't make any sense. All right, in essence, echolalia is the repeating of any kind of sound. Now, I haven't got an exhaustive list here. Every autistic person is different. You understand that. We all have an individual autistic brain. We'll have individual challenges and strengths. We're all different. So these are just some general examples of how echolalia can present. All right. So let's start off with the obvious. Repeating your own words, sentences, thoughts, wants. So you've heard, you've heard yourself, you've heard something, right? And you're repeating it, repeating the words of others. Okay, so this is a, an obvious one. You might be in a situation, this happens to me from time to time, where, whether it's my son or myself, may repetitively repeat some words or sentences we've heard someone say to us. It might even be my wife, his mum. Okay. Now, automatically the reaction for a neurotypical person is, why are you mocking me? What's your problem? And of course, we're not. We're not. It's okay. Maybe it's mocking to you, to us. It's processing. It's under, so you've said something, 
And you might play it over in your head when someone says something to you. Some autistic people will, will say it out loud as a form of processing. It's a form of understanding and conveying and crafting a response potentially. Now, I found on that Netflix show, you know, that um, Attorney Wu, that extraordinary Attorney Wu, which is, which is I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a cool show. I didn't watch a lot of it. It's kind of a cool show. I don't know if it's a good or a bad representation of an autistic person. Anyway, this is not about that. This is an example. Attorney Wu repeats words to process. Now, what, what do you mean? Well, as an example, like I think it's in episode one. She repeats the words of the judge. So she's in, a, she's in a court, right? But there's a hearing going on. So you have to be very official and formal, right? The judge says stuff. She repeats them. You're not supposed to, That's not a good thing. And I'm pretty sure she's kind of like given a silent reprimand by her own team in court. But this isn't a malicious thing. No one's trying to break any rules here. So Attorney Wu is repeating the words of the judge to process what the judge has said and to then obviously convey a response. Now, of course, it's out loud, but again, we're talking, this is, this is echolalia. This echolalia isn't just keeping it inside. Okay, so that, that's an example. Does that make sense? Judge says something, attorney woos, repeats it out loud. Back to the judge, that's a no-no in the law world, I'm saying. Another example, repeating the words of anyone in your head like a loop. So this is where you'd go, well, why does an attorney woo do that? Maybe she does. Maybe she's doing both. You just don't know. But this is another example. So someone says something. It could be just completely arbitrary. It could be meaningless. It could be important. For some reason, you start repeating that that one little phrase in a loop over and over and over, but it's in your head. Now, this also happens exactly the same thing out loud. Okay, but it's, 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 it's a loop that... And it seems like, why? What is wrong with you? What is going on? And again, the loop continues as the processing continues. Think of the loop almost like a, a processing cycle right? The wheel going around and around and around eventually stops when the processing is done or complete. Another example of echolalia. Repeating quotes, phrases, or sounds from movies and TV shows. Now, I can't give you examples for everyone, but look, for me as a person, I've always done this. It's a, and in most bizarre timing, and it's done, again, I think legitimately is like a regulation processing thing. So, Uttering, just, just, you know, saying quotes, random quotes from movies, TV shows, you know, phrases and quotes and catchphrases and sounds. And, I, and then none of them are in context and none of them are, are remotely relevant to modern day times. <laughs> they're like movies I've seen in when I was a kid or years ago. And they're just random, weird. And I can't even give you examples because it's like they're triggered by things. So when I need to regulate, when I'm being overwhelmed, overstimulated or I need to process. They just come out of nowhere, right? Honestly. And they're so out of context and they're like, some people are like, what is that even from? What's the point of that? And again, it's a form of echolalia that, that I particularly use for regulation and processing. I find sometimes too, they pop out when I'm, getting, when I'm being a bit overstimulated or, or dysregulated, right? My capacities can't meet the level of demands or stresses on me. And yeah, they tend to come up with these random weird. So if you ever hear an autistic person just kind of utterly bizarrely or randomly in your mind, just spit out a quote or a phrase of some sounds from movies or TV shows, that's potentially the reason, a form of echolalia. Another example, repeating the sounds of nature, animals, or you know what? Absolutely anything in the outside world. So you're just going about your business, right? You might, you might actually be outside in nature noise and an autistic person repeats it now we already we've already talked about the whole point of echolalia it is the repetition <laughs> of sounds and words and phrases okay so you know like we get that there's a noise maybe there's an animal noise maybe there's a tree noise a nature noise you know i find for me uh, a lot of times and maybe it's regulating or uh, regulating or processing uh, overstimulation of sounds you know if there's like a an out of context sound so animals and stuff that's cool the ocean that's cool yeah, you know, some loud car or some motorbike or some truck brakes or someone's phone going off. They're the ones that I'll end up coming out with. And I, again, it's not a trying to mock people or offend people. It's a form of echolalia. I tend to find I repeat those more. And, and when you're in the outside world and someone's phone rings, a lot of times it's like, it's just, I mean, it might be agitating or whatever, and I tend to just 
I'll, I'll legit do it. And again, I can come across in a mocking way. It's not. It's, it, but it's just, um, it, I don't even know how to explain it in, in, in more ways than it's obviously a form of echolalia and you're repeating it. But it's a therapeutic way, but it's also, um, it's like a release. My wife's mobile phone, let's say, it rings. Sometimes out of nowhere, as soon as it starts ringing, I will literally repeat it or I will, I will be it as well at the same time. I'll make the same noise. And there's something about mobile phones ringing I find really stupid. I really do. I mean, usually mobile phones are on your person or close to you. Do you need them on ring? Unless it's like an emergency, I don't really get it. My, my, my mobile phone's never on ring. It's on silent at all times. When people call me or text me, I know. I know. And most people these days have their phone connected to like their watch and seven different, seven different devices. I mean, seriously. I don't know. Do we need them on ring? They're bloody annoying. How about this one? Singing, often the same line of a song, all the same songs, another form of echolalia. Okay, so this is a big thing too, with, certainly with my, my son, my autistic son. But let's say there's a song he loves. He won't sing the whole song for the most part. He'll sing like one line, just one random line from the song. But it's like a broken record to some, but that's, that's a form of echolalia. So he's not doing it for, an, for no reason. Again, it's like a therapeutic or a, I don't know what else you want to call it, a soothing kind of action, processing action, singing the same line from a song over and over and over. There was a phase with the Old Town Road song. Oh, man. Uh, and it was just the one line. Yep, this, that was a good phase. <laughs> and I have the same thing. I mean, and it's that they are just the most bizarre songs. I don't know why they get stuck in my head from years ago, but they do. They do and I just, I'll, and my, my wife looks at me like, what are you singing? I don't know, and honestly, I don't know why they these particular songs get stuck in my head. But when I do, when I use them for for whatever reason, it's usually it's like a soothing thing or a processing thing. People think I'm doing it to mock them or agitate them, or you know, I don't know. And I'm not due to copyright reasons. I can't provide any examples. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Apart from singing, how about making other types of noises? Beatboxing is one my autistic son does. He'll, he'll just out of nowhere start beatboxing or, or making a beat, right? Just making a beat with his mouth. Clearing your throat. Humming. I'm a, I'm a clearing throat guy and I find it, it's interesting, not needed to be done, but, you know, if I'm really struggling to process or I'm really struggling, I'm overwhelmed or overstimulated or whatever, that kind of fate, that's when I start to <coughs> <coughs> like that. I mean, I didn't do that because I needed to. I'm saying that's an example. And there's a rhythm to it, and it always sounds the same. It's it's really interesting, and and it's funny because my you know my son's throat clearing is basically beatboxing, which is way better than me. He, he creates beats with his mouth in, in just out of nowhere. It's and it's a very for him it's really soothing. Another example I give you, or maybe the last example before I talk about why we do it, is the use of the, your body to make sounds. Right, so like clapping, patting, slapping, tapping, using your own body to make particular sounds, another type or form or way, an example of how echolalia can manifest amongst, you know, autistic kids, autistic people in general. So there's some of the, I guess, the key examples. So now I want to talk about why. Okay, so that's what it is. Right? That's what it is, repeating sounds, phrases, whatever. Why? What's the point? Now, like I said, it isn't too antagonized. It isn't malicious. We're not mocking there's a legit point to it. I guess let's just zone in on autistic people. What is the purpose of using echolalia for autistic people? Again, every autistic person is different, right? So I'm just going to give you some, I guess, some general examples of why I think we use echolalia. So like the autistic character in the extraordinary attorney Wu, we can repeat words that we hear from others to process those words. So you say words, I repeat them. That sounds weird to you, but I'm doing it to process those words. I need to say them out loud or hear them out loud to process them properly. I need to do that to understand them, to remember them, to hopefully formulate a response. Autistic kids, they can use it to learn how to speak. Or they can literally repeat the words of others to learn how to speak, to improve their language. They hear words, they say them out loud, okay, they they, they learn them or they're improving their understanding of them, right? And that's not dissimilar to everyone. That's why echolalia isn't exclusive to one group. We also use echolalia to communicate 
and to reach others. All right, so an example. Echolalia is communication for autistic people. Right? So like I'm saying we can use echolalia to communicate. Well, I'm telling you, as, a, as an autistic person, echolalia is communication. So when I'm repeating something that you just said and you think, why are you mocking me? I'm communicating to you. Right, that I'm I'm trying to process it. Maybe it didn't didn't hit home. Maybe I'm trying to work out what you mean. I'm trying to process it. Or if I'm doing it, if I'm you know singing a song or quotes or whatever, I'm communicating to you that I might be in distress or I might be overwhelmed or you know I might need a breather. But there's many examples. The, the hot chocolate example is, is is a funny one between my wife and I. It's like you know if I maybe let's say I want a hot chocolate, right? I might ask for one i might communicate to my wife by you know by asking my wife do you want a hot chocolate that's how i remember hearing people offer things in the past right they'll ask they'll ask the question do you want a hot chocolate so if i want to communicate to my wife that i want a hot chocolate i'll I'll ask her do you want a hot chocolate that's not me saying oh i'm gonna make a hot chocolate do you see what i'm saying i know know it sounds strange but see i've learnt by remembering and repeating the words of others. So what do you, when you want a hot chocolate, what, what do you say? Well, you ask someone else. Okay, I'll go to my wife. Do you want a hot chocolate? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, and, and she'd be like, yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be great. I'd go, oh, cool. Yeah, I'll have one too. <laughs> I don't know. I know it sounds strange. Also, repeating phrases or using scripts can help an autistic person communicate when it's too hard or too stressful to come up with your own words, right? So, Think about it. If you're struggling as an autistic person, maybe there's sensory overload or capacities, you know, not there at the moment because of the stresses or demands or whatever. And you're struggling to come up with your own words. You're struggling to formulate a sentence, right? Well, then you don't need to. Like I've just said, you're repeating phrases. You're repeating scripts that you've heard. And that's helpful for you to communicate when you're too stressed to work it out yourself. Echolalia, right? So it can be used as a, a type of, Self-talk as well during confronting or difficult situations. My son uses sometimes uses the words of us or his teachers, like words of encouragement from us or his teachers. Right, so he uses the words of others, echolalia, as a way of almost self-talking, helping himself during confronting or difficult situations. He will remember the words that we've said or his teachers said, encouraging words, and he will repeat those. And we hear him. We hear him say it. So he's repeating those words to soothe himself or process a situation. Echolalia. Actually, another reason why we do it, and this is a great example, I reckon, for like parents and stuff, is when you interact with others who aren't actually currently interacting with you or vice versa. So like phrases or sounds that may be linked to a game that my boys might like to play with me. I could be doing something, right? And my autistic son will make a noise or say a phrase that's directly linked to actually playing a game he wants to play with me. And that's his way of communicating to me, play this game with me. Does that make sense? There's a game he plays and this is, these are the noises or sounds or things. And that, that's my trigger. That's my, well, my trigger, I guess, my signal to play that game with him. It's, a, it's the way he communicates by repeating sounds or phrases that you hear from that game that maybe only I do, right? We're not even in the same room potentially. But, you know, instead of coming to me and talking to me and asking me and you know, maybe that's not something that even occurred to him, I'll make a noise or a sound from the game. Echolalia can also be used to provide an acknowledgement of receiving the words of others. You're not feeling good? Okay, not feeling good. I'm using that. Now, also, we can use it to stim, to regulate the self soothe Like I said, echolalia is really important for many things. It helps us process. It can soothe us. It can regulate us. It might just be a, a, a stimming tool, which is, in effect, soothing. From my point of view, uh, just my experience, I find sometimes sounds from your mouth, your body, that can be more effective stims than just about anything else available, in my opinion. I can find a lot of stimming tools and toys kind of irrelevant, but words and phrases and sounds and catchphrases, I mean, they're, they're way more useful for me personally. But everyone's different. Others may find it irritating. But autistic people can find echolalia really comforting, right? So I know it can come across mocking or irritating or weird or bizarre or inappropriate or whatever. But there's actually, there's method behind it, okay? So, you know, echolalia, the idea of repeating the sounds and words of others is actually something that is legitimate. It's used by many people. Autistic people especially use it. They do it in many different ways. It's not just about hearing you say something and saying it back, right? Like we've talked about, 
sounds, music, movies, TV shows, whatever. It's not just about that, but it's also about doing it for a reason. Like we said, processing, regulating, soothing. So it's actually really, really important, and it's something I hope you understand more now, and that's the whole point of what we're here for. <laughs> but I hope it's something that's, that's actually given you, oh, okay, so that's why, that's why you do this, as opposed to I just think you're just a bad dude just trying to mock people or sing stupid songs or make stupid quotes. Well, no, th- th- we are actually providing you an insight into how we are feeling at that one moment, which is really helpful for everyone, right? Because then you, if you understand people, you can help them, you can support them, you can appreciate them, passionate towards them. Yeah, it's a win-win. My Friend Autism with Orion Kelly. Join the conversation now by following Orion Kelly on Facebook. Hey, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it, and thank you for listening as well. If you couldn't watch the video podcast, thank you for listening to the podcast. Either way, I'd love it if you consider subscribing to this YouTube podcast channel, Orion Kelly Podcast, so we can reach more people. Don't forget my primary channel, Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. And hey, honestly, thank you so much for your support on my mission to raise a level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. You guys are amazing. You've been listening to My Friend Autism with Orion Kelly. To join the conversation, get in touch with Orion and binge all the podcasts, blogs, and videos, visit orionkelly.com.au.